Hurts fires, passes, low but caught. The Eagles fly, and the Broncos find a way. Play fake. Wilson taking a shot deep for his tight end. And what a catch! Coach Hackett owning up to the messy home opener saying they'll do what it takes to win, even if they have to get ugly. In the end, we got to be able to run run it down there. We might have to run over somebody. Plus, contradicting reports after a football game in Aurora had to be put on pause. It was on the sideline. Everybody kind of jumped in. Their players came running over. Now, a different side to what the school district is calling a fight. There's no punches thrown by coaches or by players. And good evening and thank you for watching this special post-game edition of Denver 7 News. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Nogden. Glad you're with us tonight. Philadelphia Eagles made an impressive show for their home opener. Wish we could say the same about the Broncos. Let's get right over to Denver 7 Sports Director Lano Bienvenu. We may be coming off a win, but it sure doesn't feel like yeah. it. No, I mean, we're here on Victory Monday, Ann and Shannon, but it's been hard to celebrate. <laughs> Yay. I mean, Coach Nathaniel Hackett has looked incompetent and clueless in his first two games. Even in the win over the Texans Sunday, the theme was, what the heck are you doing and why? There were penalties and the mind-boggling decisions like we've seen this. The 31 handoff to tight end Andrew Beck. The delay of game penalty, having to punt instead of trying a long field goal. Burning timeouts, going against all common football sense. Broncos country had seen enough. They know bad football when they see it. The fans booed the Broncos in the first home game. They mocked Hackett by counting down the play clock for him. Well, today Hackett seemed to realize just how bad this looks, especially across the country. The Broncos are the laughing stock of the NFL right now. And he said, right now, this has to stop. I think I just need to be ahead of it a little bit more. And I need to, because, you know, when you're calling plays, you want to naturally get the next play going. And uh, I think just getting that information maybe a little bit earlier, those are the things that we're just talking through and going through to make sure that, that I just have all the right information. And, and the, the most important thing is being on the same page with Russell also, is that letting him know, hey, we might have four downs here. And, and I think I could do a better job in, in making him aware of that. I just want to be sure that I'm uh, the most efficient I can possibly be and communicate the best way that I can. And up to this point, we haven't done that. And so I know I can get a lot better. All right, Broncos insider Troy Rank is here now. And Troy, you were at Hackett's press conference today. And uh, I got to say, his demeanor was a lot different than it was last Monday night at this time after the loss in Seattle. Listen, Lionel, we saw a humbled Hackett today. He's starting to appreciate the gravity of what it means to be the coach of the Denver Broncos and what it means to be the coach when you have Russell Wilson as the quarterback. There's no patience. This team has missed the playoffs for six consecutive seasons. They've had five straight losing seasons. So Hackett in his game day operation, it's been troubling and alarming because of basic mistakes in clock management indecisiveness that's the thing that i've been concerned with we thought of all things that would happen the offense would be better they're averaging 16 points a game Lionel, yeah. and that's a problem so we'll see if he will learn from this he's not changing his coaching staff and he's not relieving himself from play calling duties but can he fix the game day operation well he did mention russell wilson there uh, after two games in this offense troy russ's 17th ranked passer with a rating of 86.5 he's 20th in td passes with two and 26th in completion percentage at 58.9. These are Trevor Simeon and Drew Locke numbers. This has to get better because at some point, Russ is not going to stand for it. The coach continues to make the quarterback look bad. The Broncos are being embarrassed. But as of now, Russ is saying all the right things. I believe in Coach Hackett. I believe in who he is. I believe in his understanding of the game. And uh, we're just going to keep getting better and better. I mean, this is a journey that's together, and I'm excited for it. If anybody's going to correct it, it's going to be him. That's the great thing about Coach Hackett. He's going to he's going to work his butt off to correct it. I'm going to correct it, whatever details I need to correct. And uh, it starts with us, and then we'll go from there. He's still smiling for now. But, Troy, 17th, 20th, 26th. Russell's not used to these kind of numbers. He's behind Carson Wentz, Jared Goff, Geno Smith, and Joe Flacco. What do you think Russ is thinking behind closed doors? Well, right now they have delusions of adequacy. It's been embarrassing. Really what it needs to happen is keep it simple, stupid. They need to streamline the operation. So what he's thinking is 
Why is it taking so long for the play call to get in? Because then they're late getting out of the huddle. That limits the ability for Russell Wilson to audible at the line of scrimmage. They've got to clean up the operation. So for me, Hackett needs to decide who's going to be in his ear on game day. Make that one voice, maybe two. He's listening to wait too many people. He's got to trust himself, and they need to find balance, Lionel. When they need to run, they pass. When they pass, they should have been running. They've got to figure it out. I think we're going to see that relationship evolve and get better, but right Right now, it's a little clunky, a little bumpy. Well, Troy, we're only going into week three. But for Hackett, the way things have gone in the first two games, I mean, is this a must win? Week three, you're at home, national TV audience, 49ers. Can he look this bad again? Well, listen, it's not a must win because you, the, the nature of the schedule, have a lot of games left. But what you cannot have is another embarrassment where you're talking about the Broncos on Monday morning about simple high school hairy coaching decisions. That's what can happen. If you lose to the Niners 20 to 17, they're a Super Bowl contender. No shame in that. But if you lose because of basic mistakes in how to run a football game, at that point, you would see Nathaniel Hackett on the Bunsen burner, as crazy as that sounds after three games. Well, yeah, because you got owners now that uh, if you got $60 billion and you bought the team and you're being embarrassed by your head coach, you're like, I got buyout money in the drawer there in my dresser. <laughs> I mean, it, it is crazy to think that Hackett would be in trouble with the new ownership group after three games. Well, they've got time, but he's got to figure it out quickly because there's no patience when you have Russell Wilson. Right. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater, Drew Locke, different. Not with Russell Wilson. All right, we'll have much more Broncos coming up later on Denver 7 Sports at 10. Thanks, Troy. For now, and Shannon, back to you. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Well, the first home game at Empower Field left some Broncos fans disappointed. And this had nothing to do with the way the team played. It was the long lines for food and drinks that a lot of people say made them miss part of the game. Denver 7's Jessica Porter looked into what went wrong. Jess? Well, guys, it's not cheap to go to a Broncos game these days, so waiting 45 minutes for a burger is not the fan experience many were expecting. But I did some digging, and the problem went far beyond in Power Field at Mile High. Social media wasn't just blowing up about the Broncos win yesterday. One fan called the concessions the worst ever. Another said it was a poor first game experience. Many complained about waiting a long time in line to buy food and drinks and credit card machines not working. Saying it got so bad, employees gave away free food to disgruntled customers. Now, Aramark, the company that operates concessions at Empower Field, blames the problems on their credit card servicer. They told us, quote, Freedom Pay experienced a nationwide outage that resulted in interruptions to credit card payment services at many retailers and entertainment venues. Now, I did find that this issue truly was nationwide. Green Bay Packers fans have been dealing with duplicate pending charges on their accounts from Sunday night's game because of Freedom Pay. The Milwaukee Brewers also had an outage that shut down food and vending, food and drink vendors. Now, Freedom Pay services were restored this morning, and Aramark says they don't expect this to be a problem in the future. Let's hope not. In the studio, Jessica Porter, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Jess. Well, Thursday night's high school football game between Aurora Central and Rangeview never finished. After Aurora Public Schools says several fights broke out with the less than 10 minutes left in the game. And we spoke with a referee last night who claims he was assaulted during all this and believes it needs to be investigated fully. He also adds that the actions of the coaches had a role in what happened. Those words sparked backlash from several coaches who called and wrote to us saying the officials' versions of events just wasn't true. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon spoke with one of those coaches. Colette? Yeah, that coach says he was outraged when he heard what the referee had to say, so he spoke with us tonight anonymously. A play from the Aurora Central and Rangeview game last week, where we have two videos. This one posted to YouTube by the Rangeview Review. Student journalists, this angle shows a player pushed out of bounds in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. What happened next depends on who you ask. Immediately, all of the coaches separated everybody. Another video posted by the same group shows what the sidelines looked like at some point after the play. There's no punches thrown by coaches or by players. The voice you hear is a coach. It's been put out district-wide that if somebody talks, then their job or their position on that team could be in jeopardy. Choosing to speak with us anonymously after hearing what one of the officials who was calling the game had to say to us on Sunday. The Aurora Central player was kicking him and then he jumped on top of him and started punching him in the neck. Mark Young has a very different account than the coach. I want to be sure that this incident is investigated fully because of the seriousness of it. 
the, uh, the assaults and the coach's behavior throughout this game. We talked to Young again today, who claims he had a better vantage point than the coaches and stands by his statements. They were completely false. It misrepresented what the coaches worked so hard to do, it misrepresented how the coaches reacted, and the players as well. In a letter to both communities, Aurora Public Schools says spectators jumped the barriers. APS also used the word fight when describing what happened, but the coach disagrees with that wording. Well, the real story, if you really want to know, was what happened after the game. The coach saying everything really continued into the parking lot after the game, when Aurora police say pepper spray was used to clear the stadium, but that it was not sprayed by their officers. It was, quite honestly, adults not being adults. The game was suspended that night and is likely being rescheduled, even though the coach says he doesn't think it should be, claiming there have been threats related to the game since Thursday. I don't care how long you wait, I don't think it's enough time to cool off saying he's speaking out for the players he believes are being blamed for what happened. It was not the players on either side. The good young men, all of them. Aurora police said they don't have any reports of assaults related to Thursday night's game. Young did make a claim saying he saw a coach punching a player in the midst of all of that. But Aurora Public Schools says they have no information that would substantiate that claim. They added they're proud of all their coaches and how they handled the game. Live tonight, Colette Bordel on Denver 7. Thank you, Colette. Coming up, questions still unanswered after a police car was hit by a train with a woman inside. Why Platteville police say she was in the police unit in the first place, and we'll have an update on her condition. And it is giving tough, getting tougher to make it in farming. With a new environmentally friendly way of farming that's putting thousands of dollars back in the pockets of local farmers. It was a hot one today, 92 in Denver, 97 out on the Eastern Plains at Ray. We have another scorcher tomorrow, but then a big change arrives for Wednesday.